guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Violet, excuse me, Violet Memoir, Lee's Path. So yeah, let's jump right into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go, girl. All right. I'm about to walk into the garage itself, but I realize just in time that I'm probably not allowed to go in there. There's a lot of dangerous tools, and if I'm being honest, I'm terrified that car is going to fall and crush me. Opting for the front desk instead, I walk through the sliding door into a cramped waiting area. There's only two chairs on one side with a small table between them while the rest of the small space is only filled with a rug and the receptionist desk with a closed door next to it. I expected there to be someone behind it, but it's currently empty with nothing on my side besides a little bell. What catches my attention the most is the bulky computer that looks like it came straight from the from the 90s and off the straight from the 90s and the off-color yellow beige shows just how old it is. Whoever runs this place is either really out of touch or just doesn't care for upgrading their equipment. On the walls, it's a collection of photos. Most of them have what looks to be the employees either celebrating at workplace parties or posing in front of a freshly tuned up car. I'm not able to make out any details. A lot of these photos aren't in very high detail, but I'm able to notice a couple of things. There are a few reoccurring figures that's in all the photos while more people are added on. It confirms the feeling I've had since I entered the building. This business feels very familiar more than anything else. There's a sense of casualness that isn't typical for a work environment. At least, I don't think it's typical. I've only got my parents' jobs to go by, and theirs tends to be high stress. Not wanting to dwell on my own family situation, I decide to tap the bell. I should have been better prepared for the high-pitched sound, but it still leaves me wincing. I'm glad someone like Lucas isn't here. His poor huge ears. The response comes, from the comes through the closed door, muffled but loud enough to be clear. For a second, I think it's Lee due to its deep voice, but there's an accent to it that I can't place. Be there in a second. Just hang in there. With just that, I'm left staring at this large collection of photos, so with just as many people staring back while the sounds of tools resound from even in this isolated room. Despite these photos bringing a smile to my face just moments ago, the sudden dip of my mood after recalling my own situation makes my eye contact with them hard. It feels like hundreds of eyes are watching me, and this room feels so small. Little details are becoming progressively more noticeable the longer I stay in here. The reception counter is just a little too worn. The paint's peeling, and there's a large exposed patch of wood that's eroding away. My thoughts immediately go back to that awful nightmare yesterday and just how decrepit that whole place was. That thing. Whatever that was, whether it was a monster or just some freakishly large person, the image of it chasing them down the hallways burned more into my brain than I thought. A breath of warm air brushes the back of my hair, causing all my fur to stand on edge and I whip my body around, nearly tripping over one of the chairs in the process. My heart's pumping as I brace myself for the worst, to see that striking image of demonic entity masquerading as a construction worker. But there's nothing there. Nothing but the sliding door that has been left sliding open. Just enough to allow the warm midday air to blow through. Not trusting anything after everything that's happened as of late, I continue to wait and stare out the window for anything to prove me right. The slightest hint that things aren't what they seem. There's nothing there. It's like Lily said. Focusing on what happened is just going to be a hindrance to us. But I can't follow my own reassuring thoughts, and I slide the door closed before backing away to the other side of the room. Oh dear lord, what is going to happen? The sound of the door behind me slamming, uh, slamming open <laughs> has me letting out a shout, and this time I do trip on the leg of the chair, taking a tumble that causes my elbow to thump against the door, sending a surge of discomfort through my body. Despite everything, the main feeling overwhelming the main feeling overwhelming everything else is relief, followed closely by embarrassment. I'd really let my own my own mind psych me out so much that I nearly damaged property and myself. Whoa, sorry about that. I didn't mean to startle you. I just thought I'd left you waiting a little too long, so I tried to hurry on up. Here, let me help you up. The rat, whose youthful appearance and slim body doesn't match his deep voice, comes around the desk to offer me a hand. The palm and pads are thick are a thick shade of black, likely from all the grease and grime he's working with constantly. But if there's anything I want to do more than anything else, it's just get off the floor and pretend that never happened. That I'm not turning into a paranoid lunatic who jumps at everything due to a few dreams. Taking his hand, it's barely an effort for him to yank me to my feet despite he being even skinnier than Lee. The first thing I notice is that he's not wearing a jumpsuit like the bear I saw outside. This guy's just wearing a grease-covered white tank top and heavy-duty cargo pants. Now he's made sure I'm okay, his expression looks more bored than anything else. He doesn't look upset, but like he'd rather be doing anything other than manning the front. I'd say welcome, but you've probably waited enough, eh? Hmm. Hmm. I'd say welcome, but you've probably waited enough, eh? Ah, there you go. Yeah. I figured. Well, I haven't seen you around here before. What did you need? He walks back around to sit at the receptionist. 
taking a moment to wipe his hands on a rag in a futile effort to clean himself up. Once he's satisfied, despite a distinct black stain still remaining, he grabs a hidden pair of glasses from out of sight and clacks the keys to the computer, bringing it to life. Oh, I don't need um, I don't need my car fixed. I'm just here to see Lee. He told me to meet him here. That catches his attention instantly, and his bored expression shifts to one of curiosity. He even takes the time to lean over to make sure the door to the rest of the garage is closed. Don't see many people coming over for him, other than his sister. I didn't think he had any friends. Despite the harsh words, there's a sense of pride in his voice and the hints of a smile on his face. It's surprising since he doesn't look much older than Lee. If anything, he looks younger. Not by much, though. They look rather similar now that I'm getting a closer look at the rodent. There's a clear species difference. They don't even come from the same family, but if Lee's fur was darker and he removed all his accessories, I'd believe they were siblings. Just head out back. He's working on the Chevy. It's the car on the ground. Don't worry about Colin. The big guy's got a big mouth, but he's a teddy bear. He won't hurt you. I can just go in? Of course. Yeah, I'll trust you to stay away from any tools and don't get too close. To the cars, obviously. Don't be scared to introduce yourself to the guys, too. His sentence is immediately undermined with a loud clanging, some of the something hitting the floor, but he shows no signs of concern. Just more inquisitive glances at the door. Actually, give me a sec. Give it a second. Looks like Colin's lowering the hoist. Don't want you getting crushed by that. Lee would break my jaw again. He broke your jaw? Not literally. He just sucked me when we first met. I was shit, but he wasn't much better. Water under the bridge now. Name's Victor. Call me Vic, and never Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Alice just called and said you forgot to order the fucking clutch kit again. Hmm. Swap that out for this one. Mm -mm. Oh, that's the stuff. Oh. Yeah. A new voice enters the fray from another door behind the counter that I hadn't even noticed. It was so well edged into the corner that it blended in. Storming through is a raccoon that looks older than Lee and I combine and I combined, gray fur peppering his beard. Unlike Victor, he's wearing a proper clean uniform that's even got the logo embroidered on the shirt. His large gut is completely overshadowed by his large arms and intense expression. His presence is overwhelming despite barely being any taller than me and likely smaller than everyone else working here. Despite storming in here over something else, his eyes hone in on the rat's clothes, and the flare in his eyes alongside the gulp from the rodent makes it clear something's wrong. <clears throat> what did I tell you about wearing your fucking jumpsuit? We're supposed to be professionals, and I expect you to act like one. Excuse me. Hey, Lee's never wearing his right. You can't even see the logo. Why am I the only one that gets shit for this? At least he fucking wears it. Now get your act together. Poor Alice had to order the clutch kit on the spot because you were too busy pissing around with the Chevy. You're supposed to man the front desk. At the word poor Alice, the rat's eyes roll so far into the back of his head that I genuinely worry for him for a moment before they come back down. <sighs> but, I <clears throat> but I signed up to be a mechanic. I'm here to fix cars and answer phones and order parts. The raccoon walks up to the rodent, a lecture bubbling in his throat when he finally catches sight of me. I guess he didn't realize the two of them weren't alone. Ha! Sorry about that, kid. It might, it's mighty unprofessional of me. The name's Graham. Pleasure to meet you. Ignore the dumbass behind me. He's just being a baby. Ugh, whatever. I expect his attention on me to end with his introduction, but he comes around to offer a handshake that I can't refuse after seeing him chew out poor Victor. You're Lee's friend, right? He let me know he was heading off with one of his friends from university. Good to see that boy getting out again. He's all work and no play, that one. You can say that again. You're not much better. I'll, I'll play and no work with this one. Give me proper work and I will. Despite the defiant tone, there doesn't seem to be any genuine hostility between them. It sounds similar to a kid talking to their parent. The raccoon only gives him a stern glare that has the rat grumbling as he messes around with the keyboard in front of him, trying his hardest to avoid eye contact with his boss. I give you a tour, but I got to fix Vicky's mess. Don't worry though, Colin's taking a break for at the, taking a break at the moment, so it's just Lee back out back. You'll be fine. Thank you very much. No, thank you. He's been a lot more talkative lately. Reminds me of how he was when he was younger. That kid was such a such a spitfire. I think I've discovered where Lee's got his fondness for the kid nickname from. And Graham has turned to a, turned his attention back to the rat, trying to scold him about something in a low whisper in an attempt to keep some level of un, keep some level of professionalism. And Victor rolls his eyes in my direction, which only served to cause the older male's tone to get more stern. Uh, two of them are the two of them are a strange pair. I'm about to walk through the door when I just barely manage to catch their muttering. Despite their low tones, it doesn't really seem like they care if anyone can hear them. It's more out of professionalism.
I'm sorry, man. Tell Alice I fucked up. Tell her yourself. She'll chew your ass out when she gets back. Just try not to make it happen again. You know, you know I put you on here because people... You know I put you on here because people love talking to you. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Anytime, Vicky. The rat lets out a whimper, but the raccoon just shut, just ruffles the rat's small patch of head fur, causing Victor to give a satisfied grumble that he's trying his hardest, and failing to keep quiet. Graham leaves him alone to walk back to his door, only stopping a moment to look back at me. I expected him to give me a scowl for snooping, but he just gives me a slight nod before heading in. Victor, on the other hand, uh, looks much more embarrassed at their show of affection and chooses to ignore me, but it's clear from the shade of his exposed ears and the frantic typing on the keyboard that he's feeling a little flustered. It's best I just head through and leave him alone. They seem like good guys, if a little strange. The garage appears to be completely vacant right now. The only indication that there's still anyone inside is the occasional tapping coming from the far car whose hood is still raised, obscuring anything and anyone behind it. Despite each wall having at least one large roller door, there's still a distinct metallic smell that makes me want to cover my nose. It feels like a, uh, it feels like a noxious concoction of fumes that would knock an elephant out in seconds. That's probably why they need so much airflow, if I had to guess. The polar bear I saw earlier has completely vanished, without a trace, and the car he was working on is now resting on the ground, no longer hoisted up in the air. I must have finished with, with that one for now. Or taking a break. Despite all the trolleys filled with different tools, they're neatly pushed into the corner to allow easy movement around the garage. Even with permission, it still feels like I'm intruding, so I shuffle over with haste to the car on the far side, hoping to catch a glimpse of Lee as I get closer. But I'm not able to see anything until I round to the front and catch a familiar possum tail sticking out the hood of the car alongside legs weary very, alongside uh, legs wearing very familiar pants that have flaps folded down. Any potential uncertainty on if this was another possum is thrown at the window at the sight of a rose tattoo on his exposed lower back. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like a lady's wearing anything to cover his body. I reach out to get Lee's attention before remembering what happened last time I made this mistake. Even if I was, even if I was 100% certain he wasn't going to lash out. I wouldn't want him smacking his head if I startled him. Uh, hey! I intended to carry on, but the moment the word leaves my lips, his tail tenses up and all sounds from inside the car cease. There, a burst of clanking... There's a burst of clanking before his body shifts and he pulls himself out of the hood. Despite the immense airflow airflow from the, through the room, there's a heat coming from the car that I hadn't even noticed was beginning to cause a slight sweat until Lee fully emerges, looking more drenched than someone at a gym. Hey, kid. Sorry I wasn't out there to meet you. The guys just uh, wanted me to check why the hood was overheating and then I can go. It looks like the heat isn't just affecting me at the moment as... Affecting me at the moment as Lee reveals himself from the hood. I'm able to see he isn't even wearing his jumpsuit properly. The entire upper half of it is unzipped and is tied around his waist, leaving him exposed from the waist up. His fur is even more matted down and drenched than it was after his shower this morning. At least I've seen him enough by this point to not be too affected by him by seeing him without any shirt on, even if my eyes still gravitate to the many features his stomach holds. Honestly, uh, the thing gravitating my attention the most is just how much grease and grime he's covered in. Not only are his hands completely black, but there's streaks of it across his body, including his stomach. I knew that this would be a hands-on job, but I wasn't expecting it to be this dirty. I'd rather just ignore all the mess entirely. Right now, I'm more focused on just how out of breath he is. While he's doing a good job of hiding it, I'm still able to hear light panting from the possum and, sw and, the, and, sweat dripping, and the sweat is dripping off his nose. Is it usually this hot? Yes, but not this bad. His car's been burning up whenever we turn it on, so I'm trying to figure out the issue. It won't take me long to finish up and we can head off. Did you find the issue? I have a good idea. I'm just gonna be a, I'm just gonna, gonna, I'm just gonna go be checking a couple of more things and I'll let the boss know. You don't have to wait around. I don't think Vicky would mind if you stayed inside. I don't mind. It's just a little too hot in here, but it's not too bad. Uh, are you doing okay? Y you don't look too good. I try to reach my hand out to comfort him, but he brushes it away, even even taking a step back in the process. There's a flush of worry across his face, and for a moment I thought I did something wrong before I realized what was happening. All right, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Trezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our Not Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all. See you all in the next video. Bye bye